being used in the, within the industry and even at the level, uh, at the end level of um, demolition work activity. You know, so at such point, you know, the, 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 the material is being disturbed. And, um, and once the bacteria is breaking down to fine particles, they are being exposed to the hair, uh, you know, and they become part of the, the constituent within the hair. And so once people breathe it in, you know, they tend to go into the lungs and accumulate there within the lining of the lungs. You know, just like um, the way we discuss um, some, uh, we discussed it, it discuss a topic about them, um, silica dust some time ago. So they have, it has similar mechanism, you know, how it gets into the human lungs, um, specifically because that is the target organ uh, where it manifests and gives um, uh, health implication. So um, basically, we 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 have uh, we have different type of uh, asbestos, okay, in nature based on um, asbestos as an emergency response act, which is a law that was uh, enacted in the United States in 1986. You know, uh, they gave a classif classification uh, about six types of asbestos. And the first one, based on its, um, um, is the most common type of asbestos, which you could find in so many form of materials. So it's called the crystallite, crystallite rather, and uh, it's popularly called the white asbestos. And the sources, the sources where we can get this asbestos is those roof materials, ceilings, wall, floor of homes, businesses, also they are found in automo automobile brake. You see the brake pad, you hear all those brake pads you see, all those materials that are used in producing those brake pads, they are all source, uh, the materials are from um, the white asbestos. Okay, like um, also like the brake lining, the, like I said, then the gaskets, for, for those of us who, 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 who owns a car will know what the gasket means. So when you see the nature, like you see the photograph, sometimes when you look at the nature, the texture, uh, the physical appearance of gaskets, you, you begin to understand what we are talking about it's, and why. Because you see it, 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 because of the heat resistance. You know, when your car overheats, you have overheat issue. It is the gasket that gets burned. So you will know the level at which the overheating would have gotten to before the gasket, the top cylinder or whatever uh, gasket get burned. Okay, it's also used in boiler seal, you know, the, when the, you know, in the boiler, in, especially in industrial, some large um, facility like that, I use this boiler and all that. For them to seal it, I uh, use as insulation, uh, insulation for pipes, ducting work, and also appliances. So all those things you see, these are things that we see in most buildings, in most facilities. So by virtue of that, we discover that in such facility, one way or the other will have and asbestos containing materials. Okay, such materials are called asbestos containing um, uh, materials. So um, the second one is uh, amosites, which is called the brown asbestos. Okay, so most frequently you find them in cement sheets, pipe insulation, also find in, insulator, in insulating board, ceiling ties, thermal insulation product as well. Then the third, um, Type is the, 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 the chrysodolite, which is called the blue asbestos. And also you can find them from insulator materials, which are used for steam engines. Also, they are also used in some spray coating um, um, process, pipe insulation, plastic, and also cement product, as the case may be. And the, sorry, yeah, three, this is supposed to be the four, five, six, sorry. Yeah, so we have the antophil antophilite, we have the tremolites and we have the actinolites. Okay, these are the six types, you know, in terms of the classification from the um, law that is um, um, enacted in the United States that um, regulates the use of asbestos within the different industry. So when we look at the regulation, like I've said, we have the Asbestos Hazard Emergency Response Act. You know, they are the one that classify all the asbestos form to different forms of variety of um, asbestos minerals, okay? And also this law granted the US Environmental Protection Agency the permission to regulate the six types of asbestos 
when it was enacted in 1986. And um, it is estimated that more than 50 countries all over the world has already banned uh, this asbestos containing uh, materials. So like the Environmental Protection Agency within the U.S. says they enforce the regulation to protect the public from exposure of these harmful um, minerals. Okay, and these rules cover both manufacturing process and process industry distribution of even the product. And also, we also know we are familiar with OSHA. Um, they also set standard to safeguard worker in terms of the handling of this material, this um, um, minerals um, compound, including the exposure limits, how you are going to protect yourself using um, PPE and also the training requirement that is expected from employers in order to safeguard the, the, the workers. And also within the United States, we have the national emission standard. This standard also uh, for the regulate, um, the, the, the set up standard for air pollutants. Okay, they also provide guidance, okay, on asbestos removal and disposal to prevent em environmental contamination. Now, looking at the health risks, the health implication, okay, of asbestos, because that should be our focus, you know, for what we are going to take home today, because uh, more often we talk more about um, safety, safety, safety. Uh, there are less emphasis on the risk, um, on the health aspect of uh, health and safety. Most times we just focus on safety. So sometimes it's just good for us to uh, remind ourselves about the health aspect. So when we look at the exposure to this asbestos, what the long-term effect brings to people who are exposed to it is lung cancer. Okay, because exposure to asbestos fiber can lead to the development of lung cancer and mesothelioma. Mesothelioma, you know, it's a rare aggressive cancer that affects the lining of the lungs, because the lungs is lined by what you call the, the, the pleural membrane. Okay, so once once this um, alpha substance gets into the lungs they get entrapped into this lining, this pleural membrane, you know, and make it, or it, they will become so fibrous in nature. Okay, and when that happens over a long period of time, you know, it takes it takes time, sometime between maybe 10 to even up to 50 years, depending on the exposure, though it's, it's a rare case, but it does happen, you know. So the, the risk or the health implication could be in the form of, and serious and non cancerous okay? Like the, the asbestosis also, which is a chronic lung condition caused by the inhalation of asbestos fiber, it's result in scarring of the lung tissue, leading to breathing difficulty and long-term health problem. This could be like a disability where you, you, you become disabled in some certain aspect, having some inability for you to breathe properly. In that case, it is not cancerous, but it's, it's a condition that will make you it's just like somebody who has asthma. You see the person will be having crisis, will be having difficulty, do is not cancerous, okay? So in some other form of can um, cancer, uh, once one is exposed to this asbestos, it's also, it can affect the ovarian, it can cause ovarian cancer. But the most common form of cancer is the lung cancer. It also can affect the larynx. You know, when you look at um, the, um, you know, the, 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 this respiration is connected to the esophagus and all that. There's a connection. So whatever you breathe in or you take in as connection, so it can affect the larynx uh, in terms of cancer. So they call it laryngeal cancer. And also for the non-cancerous aspect, like I've said about the asbestosis, we also have what we call the pleural, um, the pleural plague. We have the diffuse pleural thickening. Like the pleural plague, it will just affect some, some portion, some parts of the a pleural membrane within the lungs. On the other hand, on the diffuse pleural thickening, it, it tends to affect the larger part, the entire pleural membrane of the lungs. Okay, like another form of um, um, non-cancerous um, condition also is what we call the pleural effusion. You know, in this case, there will be a kind of accumulation of fluid between the space of the lungs and the chest. Okay, so it can also lead to um, uh, what we call pleuritis or pleuritis, okay, there it will affect the lung 
the lining of the lungs, then it becomes inflamed. It's just like an inflammation when you say something becomes inflamed. Okay, so, and the last but not the least is it could lead to what we call lung collapse. At the lactasis, you know, the lung can collapse, you know, as a result of um, accumulation of such uh, harmful um, substances uh, within the lungs. Okay, so um, going forward, I will say there are groups or category of workers, you know, who are at risk, you know, or who are at, at, um, as the high risk of exposure. You know, those miners, people who work in mine, uh, mining industry, especially when you mine such material, uh, those who also work in the in mill, in a, in a, in a um, industry where they mill, do a lot of milling work, those, those who are insulators, those um, boiler makers, auto mechanics, electricians, plumber, firefighter, construction worker, industrial workers, shipyard worker, power plant worker. Because if you if you look at the people who work in all these industries, I've said they are linked to what I said in my in, I think in my second slide. Because if you see the sources where these materials are being gotten from, okay, so you discover that the list of all these workers has co cover majorly all the industries we are talking about. So that is why it is pertinent for us as a professional to have this knowledge to refresh ourselves and to also sell it out to our management because uh, it is we that have this knowledge. Most times our management, most of them, they don't understand all this earth implication, you know, and anything that has to do with uh, predisposure to cancerous effect is something that most people do not have that knowledge except if they are close or have this medical background and all that. So, and also there are, in the past, there, 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 there are a lot of research that has been done that uh, has been proved that um, we have secondary exposure uh, um, class of uh, people, you know, like um, those workers who are exposed to it, they go to work, they put on their clothes, maybe their they um, coverall and all that, maybe they bring it home you know, to wash and all that. You have people who help you to wash it at home and all that. So those people also have been exposed because they become a secondary um, um, contact of such uh, exposure. So when you look at it, because it, it, it's, it's a very risky um, substance is because when you look at the microfiber, in fact, if you put it under the temperature in Qatar, it will not melt. If you like hit it, it will not melt. So it, it's a very stubborn uh, mineral compound. You know, that is why when it gets into the lung, it has a strong effect. You could, you could, you could just look at um, silica dust. In fact, it, this one, it is more even harmful than the silica, silica dust. It has a very stubborn characteristics as compared to silica dust. So if you could see, you could imagine what silica can cause. Now imagine what asbestos can even do to the human health, which is very, very risky. And, you know, when we look at it glo um, globally, you look at the statistic, because I just want to focus on, on the um, information gotten from uh, the source within the United States, that the statistics of asbestos caused disease uncover an epidemic of tragic, um, um, tragic proportion, you know, with thousands of Americans diagnosed with asbestos related conditions each year. Now, hundreds hundred of thousands of people are diagnosed with this condition around the globe. Around 3,000 Americans are diagnosed with mesothelioma every year. This is Amer in America alone. Imagine what goes around in other parts of the world that even things are not regulated. So even the asbestos exposure causes at least 90% of all mesothelioma cases in the United States. So. The, the others are just 10%. Okay, so now from 1990 to 2010, approximately 6,300 Americans lost their life to asbestosis. This is for asbestosis, so on and so on like that. So now when we look at the related death statistics, okay, out of all conditions, asbestos related lung cancer claimed the most lives, followed by mesothelioma. A study published in 2017 claimed that annual global death rates caused by asbestos exposure is around 237,000. Then in 2018, study reported that the asbestos-related disease 
killed 39,275 people in the U.S. and 222,321 people throughout the world in 2016. So we could just imagine what that rate will be as at this time that we speak. You know, the table can show us the, the breakdown of the different uh, categories and the number of deaths, you know, in terms of the United States and the global, okay? In terms of lung cancer, in terms of mesothelioma, in terms of ovarian cancer, in terms of laryngeal cancer, and in terms of abstosis. Now, um, going forward, you know, as an anesthetic practitioner, we need to delve in, especially how to manage these substances or this harmful, uh, uh, deadly uh, compound. You know, we need to focus on the proper handling and removal of this abscess containing material. And uh, one of the forms to do it is uh, by proper assessment and testing, because there are people who are specialists who specialize in those area. You know, you know, it's very important to carry out an assessment. You have to test to find out if, if such material contain that and all that. So you know how to apply what we call abatement, uh, abatement techniques, you know, um, using professional specialized method to a, a kind of encapsulate or capture, you know, and this aspect might be coming through, it might be, it, it comes in the form of engineering control. Okay, the assessment might be coming as an administrative control, you know. So, and also disposal protocol or procedure, you know, we must, we should be able to follow a strict disposal procedure that we have locally and internationally in order to uh, prevent exposure uh, to asbestos in the workplace and in the general public at large. Then also, one other form of control, as we all know that we cannot rule out personal protective equipment, you know, especially when working with asbestos. And one of the most recommended type is you use a kind of um, uh, high efficient particulate air respirator or mask. You know, it is very essential to prevent inhalation of asbestos fiber during handling and removal because this, a lot of research has been done about this. It is recommended, not just any kind of um, uh, protection, but specifically the APA, you know, because they found out that it can be able to trap, you know, and retain such um, harmful uh, substance or compound, you know, that are harmful to the human health. And also protective clothing, you know, it's because this thing can get stick to the skin and still gets to the hair. You know, it, like I said, it's a very stubborn material. It can survive in any condition. Is it high temperature? Is it in humid condition? It does not dissolve. It does not break down by heat. So it just survive in any kind of condition. Any condition, it will strive. Whatever condition, it will strive. So that's why it is very important that um, we put all this, um, uh, this characteristic nature into consideration uh, in terms of giving out information, uh, in terms of advice. And it's also important that um, uh, training, you know, training for investors is very important. Educational program, uh, where we find ourselves working in an organization where there's likely tendency to have the high concentration of investors. It is also good that in our health and safety program, we try to incorporate um, a lot of programs that give this compression, uh, comprehensive training you know, uh, of the knowledge of investors um, in terms of the hazard, the safety procedure and regulatory compliance, you know, that are available globally, you know, to both the workers and our employer. And also hand on experience, you know, practical demonstration on sites, training to ensure that professionals are capable in identifying and handling in terms of the removal of investors, you know. So also it is very important that um, in such cases, because there are, in, in an industry where such exists, you know, sometimes you cannot just eliminate it completely. So in such cases, after you provide some kind of control measure, we need to try to employ what we call head surveillance or monitoring. We have to monitor, we have to check the workers, you know, and um, in order not to expose them to a very long um, um, period, um, in order to prevent them from getting exposed to this harmful, Compound. So there are resources and support um, um, 
uh, we can get for investor safety awareness. We have the online tools, we have the industrial or the industrial association where one can join and be able to have access to different resources. We have community and initiative in some other part of the world, like the United States and the UK. There are a lot of groups, there are a lot of advocacy group whereby people reach out, get information, create that awareness. So lastly, I will say the end of this presentation, but not the end of being aware. Abestors can kill. I will end by saying thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share this little information. I also want to give the platform back to Mr. Johnson so it could um, give others opportunity to um, hear that view. I'm also, if you have any question, if you feel we need this slide presentation, you can just get to Mr. Johnson. I'll be glad to share it, but I'm sorry, I will have to leave immediately I end this presentation because I have to join um, one of my master's class I started recently. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and thank you for listening. Over to you, Mr. Johnson. All right, Mr. Steven, thank you very much for that wonderful uh, presentation. We, we, who was talking? Nobody. Okay. So we. Engineer Tayab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today, unfortunately, I just could not prepare due to some personal reasons, due to health reasons. So okay. Maybe later after 15 minutes, give me time. I will tell you. Yeah, no, no issue. I just wanted to. So just give me a few minutes, a few seconds. Let me share my slides. So we'll continue from there. Daddy. Daddy. Okay, I'll just be I'll just be I'll just be here with you guys while I'm on my other class. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So thank you, Mr. Francis. Thank you so much. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, we'll continue from here. I'm going to share my slide. And all right. Like we all know, today we are talking about. asbestos safety at workplace. And uh, Mr. Steven has laid a very uh, great foundation for this topic today. So like our culture has always been, we, after brief presentations, we are going to give room for others to share their experience and their own personal knowledge. So we have just one hour for each week and it's not enough to to say everything about the topic, but it's just we can scratch the surface and uh, we'll continue uh, from there in our personal uh, interactions. Okay, like Mr. Stephen rightly uh, stated, asbestos is one of the known human uh, cancer causing substances. And uh, that is why we are uh, doing this presentation to enlighten us more about the presence of uh, asbestos uh, carrying materials in the workplaces, especially the buildings and the uh, old materials before the ban of asbestos. So during uh, Mr. Stevens' presentation, he mentioned that uh, many countries have banned the asbestos containing materials, but it's still in 
in use in different in other countries that have not yet banned the use of uh, asbestos. So, and even some buildings or some equipments that were manufactured before those ban are still in use. And in some situations, they are demolished. And during the demolition process, the asbestos itself get disturbed. And that is when it's at the most dangerous state. At the state when the asbestos is getting disturbed, turned into dust and the fine uh, particles, that is the most dangerous state of uh, asbestos. So that is has been taken care of. So there are, in different countries, they have different laws and regulations trying to ensure that use of, use of asbestos or asbestos carrying materials are properly regulated. So there is a health and safety at work regulation 2016 in New Zealand. In the US, there is a asbestos information act uh public law 100 to 577 so this particular act is responsible for ensuring that there is transparency in identifying hazardous uh, materials by manufacturers you know if some certain regulations are not in place some manufacturers could manufacture uh, materials containing asbestos and refuse to declare it so this is what this uh, public law in the U.S. does to ensure that every manufacturer that has used asbestos materials declares that the material contains asbestos. Also, in uh, there's another regulation, health and safety, safety, health and welfare at work regulation 2006. This is also, uh, this regulation has been in existence since 2006, and the major aim is to ensure that those people that are exposed to hazardous uh, asbestos are adequately informed and are adequately uh, trained, and to ensure that those people that are exposed to asbestos are aware of the risk associated with that uh, asbestos uh, So let's look at some of the uh, asbestos uh, carrying materials or asbestos containing materials. You see that you will not see the asbestos just like uh, in a powder form or in a cement form anymore, except maybe in those uh, uh, industries that use it as a uh, in asbestos containing materials manufacturing. So, but they are now available, they are still available in different homes, different industrial uh, buildings, and different uh, residential buildings that we are uh, constructed uh, very far, uh, far back ago. So, you see them like in gutters and uh, pipes. You see them also in some electrical meter boards. Because asbestos is a uh, advantage or is used is used as an insulating agent or insulating material. It's also used in some uh, buildings for sandproofing, because asbestos uh, uh, itself uh, can withstand very high uh, heat. That's why it's used as a heat insulator. So that is why you will see it in electrical meter boards. You'll see them also in uh, fireproof materials or uh, ceilings or uh, ties. So you'll see that asbestos containing materials are uh, in those uh, locations. You can see asbestos also in roofing panels. You'll see them also in uh, veneer floors can see them in some walls and roof cladders. Also, you see them also in some water pipes, especially hot water pipes. Okay, so because of that uh, heat insulation property of asbestos. So now we 
there are major factors, just like exposure to every hazardous substance. The factors or the risk factors depends on the time of exposure. Duration of exposure simply implies to how long the person is exposed to that asbestos. But in the case of asbestos, you don't need to be exposed for up to 15 minutes or 10 minutes to get uh, infected or to uh, get it into your uh, system. So even a one second exposure to asbestos is very hazardous, it's at a high risk. So another uh, factor is how often the person is exposed to asbestos containing materials or asbestos itself. So another factor is the size of the fibers. Some asbestos are very large and some that has been grinded or maybe that we are uh, doing drilling and the asbestos itself was disturbed and it becomes a fine particle form. So the size, the smaller the size, the higher the, the risk of getting into the uh, body system. And the type of uh, asbestos as well. These are some of the factors that, uh, uh, that will, could increase the health risk of exposure to asbestos. Now, in the... Uh, How do we minimize the risk of exposure to asbestos? Mr. Steven has touched some of them. So, but the first one is the training. It needs to be trained to recognize asbestos or asbestos containing materials. So one of those training forms is what we are, what we are doing now. We are enlightening ourselves and trying to let us know that there are still some material containing asbestos out there in the workplaces where you do your job or maybe in old buildings and during demolitions, during excavations. So we are doing that training now and it's our job as health and safety professionals to extend that awareness to others who are not, uh, who might not be aware that there are some materials that are still containing asbestos out there and that asbestos is a very high risk uh, uh, cancer causing agent. So another uh, way to minimize exposure to asbestos is to get a licensed asbestos remover, to remove asbestos. So the people or the workers who are not licensed, who are not trained to remove asbestos should not be allowed to do so. Especially during demolition activities, there should be uh, asbestos uh, uh, survey they should conduct a survey to check if there is asbestos containing materials in those uh, uh, that building before demolition could progress. And this is done by competent uh, third party uh, organizations. So if it's a minor work, then ensure that competent asbestos, uh, uh, ensure that you are competent to do the job and you follow the company guidelines. Know how to dispose asbestos correctly. Disposal of asbestos is classified as a, a strict measure. It's not something that you pick up asbestos containing materials and drop it in any waste or in any waste bin. So it's uh, collected by uh, licensed asbestos removal uh, operators and they have uh, guidelines on how to dispose them. So it's not disposed with the general waste or with our normal uh, hazardous waste, no. They, it has to be collected and disposed separately by this uh, licensed asbestos removal uh, uh, company or agents. So the next one is to ensure that the, you use correct respirators. Uh, Mr. Steven, talked more about this respirator that you don't just use any type of respirator when, when being exposed to asbestos. It has to be the one that is fit and is uh, approved for exposure to asbestos. So also you have to know how to put on the uh, uh, respirators on PPEs and how to remove them uh, properly. Now let's look at 
some of the types of two types of uh, asbestos uh, materials. Uh, Mr. Stephen has talked about white asbestos, blue asbestos, and all those types by materials. But now there's two obvious types of uh, how you can identify asbestos. One of them is non-frayable and the other one is frayable. So what do we mean by non-frayable uh, materials or asbestos? Non-frayable simply means that the material itself, when they are already dry, that they cannot be crumbled and they cannot be reduced to powdered form. So you can still see like the picture on the screen, the materials, when it's already dried, it's difficult to grind it, turn it into a powdered form anymore. So it's known as non-frayable uh, uh, asbestos material. So it doesn't mean that they do not contain asbestos. They contain asbestos, they can be asbestos containing materials, but for the fact that they cannot be reduced to dust means that they are a uh, low risk or the chances of the asbestos being inhaled is uh, uh, very low. Now, the other type is the frayable type. Frayable asbestos containing materials are those materials that can be crumbled and they can be easily reduced to dust. They can be easily reduced to powder. So when it comes any asbestos materials that is a, a, in a friable form is one of the high risk uh, asbestos because they can easily be disturbed and can, can uh, fall into dust and then <clears throat> can get into the lungs and becomes uh, problematic. So having said uh, uh, this, I will I will stop here and give uh, room for others to contribute before we before we round off uh, for the day. All right, the floor is open now. The floor is open for further contributions or questions. Uh, good evening, House. Good evening, Mr. Harris. Right. And good evening to Mr. Johnson and uh, Mr. Steve and everyone, James. Uh, actually, I I didn't meet this uh, program today. Program from I start from the from the beginning. But uh, what I heard you say, I uh, I really want to say I've done justice to the topic that we have for today. And uh, our best uh, our best our best can uh, topic. Is an, is an interesting one in the sense that uh, uh, asbestos itself is a very dangerous uh, mineral element that must be treated with utmost care. You know, like you said, in many parts of the world, there is regulation to ensure that contact with asbestos is reduced to various minimum. As a matter of fact, this has been um, Banned from being used from many parts of the world because of the health issue that is related to the use of asbestos by way of inhaling uh, asbestos. So, uh, like we have different types, like you mentioned, the crystallites and the rest of them. Okay, and just like you rightly mentioned, uh, if you discover asbestos, for example, if you are going to engage in dem dem uh, demolition, you must carry out first and foremost a survey to identify if there is any 
material that contains asbestos in that building or the facility that you are going to demolish, you know. And the people who will carry out this kind of activity, they are authorized, they are competent, not just any, uh, you know, operative or worker, no. They are competent people, they are trained to do this, they have a license for this. And when you discover this, there is a procedure in place to ensure that during the demolition, uh, people are not exposed to this adversary by way of inhalation or endangering their, their, their health. So, um, and uh, disposal also is being regulated, okay? Disposal of adversaries and material also have been uh, regulated. However, I want us to encourage each and everyone that is here present today to uh, do more findings and read more on asbestos. It's a very interesting topic. It's a critical issue in the health and safety industry uh, that everyone needs to be aware of. And um, uh, I think that is all I have to say. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Johnson. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harrison, for that your wonderful contribution. Uh, we we'll have any other person that wants to contribute. All right. The The topic has been a very wonderful one, and uh, I'm sure that, yeah. Yeah, I it's not a, it's not a uh, contribution, but it's a form of a question, okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, some places in Africa, I don't want to be uh, specific about, you know, countries, but in Africa, we still have these roofing materials made of asbestos, right? Yeah. Is there any law? Uh, do we know of any regulation or law, or, you know, that is uh, made to regulate this in Africa? Like, because a lot of people have this in their neighborhood. What are they supposed to do? Because they are exposed to this, you know. Some people take rainwater from this. Uh, you know, when the rain falls, they 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 collect the rainwater and they are also going to use. I don't know if that is going to cause any health issue anyway. You understand, but they have this in their neighborhood. Mm. Yeah, see, the the most critical part of uh, any regulation, in the especially our part of the world, is the implementation. Okay, so as I know, uh, recently there was a health and safety regulation passed in the in Lagos State, and. These are some of the aspects that we have pointed out. But uh, during my research, I tried to find out if asbestos containing materials has been entirely banned, in the, uh, especially in my country, but it's not yet. So those are some of the issues that makes it uh, looks like it's not too uh, evident. And the rate of uh, deaths that are not properly uh, recorded so it's also difficult to know if asbestos or exposure to asbestos has been a part of the uh, 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 debt. So, so far, I don't have that information if, if there is a regulation like that. But I see that when I started getting these information about asbestos or when I started reading about asbestos, I started there, uh, I began to look back at uh, some of the materials that we use back home that are still in use also. So, and uh, that is where the enlightenment comes in. And from what I know so far, is if the asbestos is not disturbed, if it's not uh, reduced into this uh, uh, powdered form, then it can it can stay for years without without uh, being a health issue to anybody. But at the time when it gets disturbed, maybe during demolition, during breaking, during removal, then that is when the, the high risk of asbestos uh, comes in. So 
if the enlightenment or the awareness goes practically to those uh, aspects, especially avoid disturbing the uh, asbestos, do not break them, do not grind them, do not drill on them. So is a, I think is a practical way of uh, keeping people uh, uh, safe from exposure to asbestos while the, the right thing should be done as per uh, following other countries to ban uh, importation or use of uh, asbestos containing materials and uh, proper regulation in place. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah, Mr. David, your hand is up. You can go ahead and contribute. Uh, 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 good evening, all. Actually, I wanted to uh, seek for seek for uh, an opportunity for a topic shed more on the likely uh, substances that we are exposed to in construction. This asbestos is also a very important topic and the topic for today. And, uh, but I will wish that uh, we add uh, this to our topic that the likely uh, elements or substances that we are exposed to in the daily construction field. Because uh, sometimes we work in the construction field and uh, we, due to the tiny particulate of these uh, substances, we don't even know what we are inhaling. But we just find out that after some time, uh, we kind of uh, develop some illnesses and cough and catar and some other side effects as a result of inhaling of different substances. So if we can shed more light on the likely substances uh, we are exposed to in construction and ways to prevent these, like the appropriate uh, PP, RPEs and PPEs to use, it will also go a long way. Uh, but uh, for these asbestos, I think it's very clear. Uh, the message is very clear. The slide from Mr. Steven and yours have uh, done justice to it. I only seek for this one as uh, an add-on to help us in the construction field. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. David. You, uh, your point is, is very clear. Though we are taking them one after the other, but I understand what you are saying, that we can, uh, in one of our sessions, make it a point to uh, maybe list and uh, maybe bring them all together and uh, highlight on some of the substances that we are exposed to. I remember uh, sometime in the past, we have discussed about silica dust. Now, today we are talking about uh, asbestos. So we will look into that and we will put it as one of our one of our sessions. Thank you very much. All right, our time is far spent. If there is no uh, additional contribution or questions, we can we can call it a day. All right, uh, thank you all for attending today's session. Uh, if you missed from the beginning, I'm going to share the link to the video so that you can watch the part you missed and uh, enlighten yourself as well. Engineer Taya, we want to contribute. Taya, go ahead. You have like two minutes more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you very much for giving me opportunity. Uh, you know, this talk is very much dangerous to the workplace activities. So we just need to be aware about all kinds of material who are the using with the safer limit and exposure level must be displayed each and everywhere where the asbestos material is being used. So I think so. The awareness is the much more important and play a wider role in saving a life. 
especially in the workplace. So nowadays, you know, some restrictions are being imposed on using asbestos material and they are trying to contaminate and trying to reduce the usage as much as possible. So today topic is quite interesting and quite uh, important in view of uh, workplace uh, risk assessment and how to be, be familiar before going to the workplace, especially for where, where using asbestos material. So today the topic is very much important and thank you very much for conducting such a wonderful session on a wonderful topic. Thank you very much. Mr. Johnson, thank you. All right, thank you, Jeanette. Yeah. So the awareness continues from here. After, after this topic, we should take the awareness uh, uh, ahead and ensure that our workplace benefit from this uh, information, at least to keep somebody safe. And one of the uh, uh, saddened part of it is that as most of to asbestos, the ill health or ill effect will not start up immediately. So it might be after you have completed your contract and has gone back home, or maybe when you are getting food and all these effects, all these health effects starts coming up. So awareness and uh, enlightening people on uh, possible uh, exposure to asbestos in the workplace is really, really uh, an important one. So guys, thank you very much as we keep propagating the message of uh, health and safety. And I'm sure that one or two persons will benefit from it. So thank you guys for coming today. Next week, Thursday, we'll converge again for another interesting topic. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Junior. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, bro. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, Johnson. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, See you next week. All right.